What's up guys, Aaron Productions here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to hook up one of these key switches to a fire alarm panel, and also use it in conjunction with the four wire smoke detectors so that you can reset them because it has the two positions, the reset and the um, test function. So what you're going to need is a panel, or you could also use a 24 volts DC source, um, something that uses just contact closure to uh, activate. It's probably not going to stay latched, obviously, depending on if you want to keep it on the whole time. But anyway, that's not what we're doing today. We're only talking about the panel. Um, you're going to need a relay, a four-wire smoke detector, which you would also need a relay for that for the end of the line. Um, so if it lost power, then the panel would know. But I don't have another relay, so I'll show that in the diagram, but we don't have one here today. And obviously, our key switch over here, which is the System Sensor RTS-151 key. Um, it has the red and green LEDs as well as the test and reset function. So let's do a quick overview of the circuitry here, or at least how it's wired. I'll give you a more detailed diagram in a second. Over in the top rightmost corner, we have a resettable power. You don't need any other type of um, power output besides resettable power. The zone, and then also we're using our alarm relay over there. As you can see, the positive just jumps from the positive of the resettable power over to the common on the relay. The relay is just for our LED lights on the key switch. So um, it basically switches between the red and the green. So we don't need another negative because the negative is already out there from the um, resettable power. So I can get away with using a two conductor over there. I should also mention that this isn't a up to code option. This is just for um, enthusiasts that want to try it out. So just to get that out of the way. I have a four conductor cable that carries the zone and the power. It comes into this box. The zone is capped off with the two orange wire nuts you can see. So that's just a pass through. And then um, we're actually switching the negatives, which I made a whole nother video um, where I was switching the positive and with the idea that I could never get the LED to work because it uses one of the um, reset legs as a negative for the LEDs. And I was thinking that I couldn't switch the negative for some reason. But if you cut either one of the lines, it'll kill the power. But um, obviously, you don't really want to do that sometimes. Like if it was an AC circuit and you're cutting the neutral, that's not really safe. Um, but this is just a DC circuit, so I'm not concerned about that at all. So basically, what happens here is um, the negative comes in and it goes through the relay to the smoke detector. Um, the positive is constant to the smoke detector because we're switching the negative, like I said. The negative, which comes constant from the panel, goes into the key switch on the reset terminal, which you have to have it plugged into the one that's also the negative or else um, the LED will only turn on when you have the switch activated because um, it's just contact closure on that. And what that does is that turns on the relay momentarily, which opens the contact because we have it between the common and the normally closed terminal. So in turn, when I turn the key, like I said, it'll turn on the relay. That will open the circuit to the smoke detector so that it will reset because that's basically what resettable power does. It just cuts the power off momentarily. Um, so since this does have a sounder inside of it, I'll demonstrate when I activate it. I'll use the reset and that will reset the detector. Obviously it's not going to reset the panel itself um, because the zone is still activated and this panel doesn't have the capability to receive a reset signal. Um, I thought of doing it on something like the MS-10UD but um, after some checking with the multimeter the zone negative and the power negative aren't connected so if I wanted to do a zone thing then I would have to use the zone to power the LED and that would obviously cause some problems with the resistance. Though the zones are all connected together, um, the negatives of the zone, so if you needed something that had a common negative and then it would go between two positives, it wouldn't matter because all the zone negatives are connected together, at least for that panel. So that's just a fun fact, I guess. And for the test function of the key switch, basically that just jumps off of the smoke detector um, on the zone. So that basically it's just another pulse station or um, contact closure just to activate it. It doesn't test the smoke detector itself. Um, in order to test the smoke detector, it would need to have a remote test capable output. I guess you could hack it somehow, but I wouldn't really recommend that. But anyways, let's go ahead and demonstrate this here. Um, let's demonstrate the test function. We'll simply turn the key switch to the test position and 
the LED will turn red because the alarm um, relay has activated. It switched from the green LED to the red LED. And I'll silence that. Now we'll put that back into the regular position there. Um, so obviously when we reset it's not going to reactivate. Reset that. And yes there is a power trouble just because um, <laughs> I don't have any batteries in it. And now let's demonstrate the smoke detector here. Use some canned smoke. There it goes. Red LED panel is activated. You could tell because of the red LED. Just acknowledge the panel there. Haven't reset it or anything. Now let's reset the detector by turning to the key into the reset position. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but the red LED is on inside of the relay and the smoke detector is off. So if I release this, the smoke detector now has power and it will reset. Obviously it's probably going to reactivate just because it has smoke in it. But that's basically it for the demonstration of this. And now I'll show the diagram for it. Okay guys, so here's my little diagram that I have here. My hands are right next to the camera, but this is actually a full-size whiteboard. Uh, you can't really tell. But anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, so starting off in the leftmost corner, we have our fire alarm control panel with its resettable power right here, and then the zone here, as well as the fire alarm relay. Down here we have our relay used to... Um, reset the smoke detector from the key switch, which our key switch is right over here. Our smoke detector for wire, as well as I put our relay in here. You don't need this necessarily, but in order for the circuit to be monitored properly, you do need um, a end of line relay for the smoke detector circuit. So it's kind of hard to explain this all at once, so we're going to go one wire at a time sort of here. So I'm going to sort of explain what everything does. Um, I mean, if you follow this schematic, it would work, but you got to follow it closely. All these little bridges here jump over the wire. They're not interconnected. Um, some of the things, like these wires, they couldn't be connected together, but um, I've just shown them leading to the same terminal. Let's get started. So starting off, um, we'll start off with the resettable powers um, journey. So we start off here with the wire going up and into the common terminal. Now, um, this is the relay. So if you don't know how a relay works, it's basically just an electromagnet right here. And then there's this metal piece that switches from um, the two sources, the normally closed and normally open. Um, and the common is connected to the piece that switches between the two things. So basically, in the dormant position, um, the metal piece is going to the normally closed terminal. Um, this is why it's normally closed. Normally means when um, the relay is off. So if the relay was on all the time, then the normally open would become the, quote, normally closed type terminal. But um, when the relay is energized, the electromagnet comes on, or the solenoid, whatever it uses, um, and then it will pull to the normally open side until the relay loses power, and then it will spring back to the normally closed. So this is why we're using it for our LEDs on our test station. The normally closed means it's always going to be on as long as the relay isn't energized. And the relay becomes energized when the panel is in alarm. That's why we use our normally closed, which goes down, over, sorry, the, <laughs> the one above the last one. And that will go into our green because we want it to be on when the uh, alarm isn't active. And then our normally open goes down around and then that goes to the red input on our test station. Now of course the LEDs need a negative and we'll get to that later. Now the positive also goes down and into our relay which jumpers off and goes into the detector. Because this is a negative switch circuit the positives will always have constant power. And as we can see it goes into the relay out of the relay into the smoke detector and finally into the smoke detector monitoring relay. Now how this works is basically um, when it has the power, which obviously when we reset it, it's going to lose the power because it's switching the smoke detector off. Um, 
So like I said with the relay, since this relay will be powered all the time, except when the smoke detector loses power due to a cut wire or whatever, um, the panel needs to know that the smoke detector is not operable. So how we do this is we take one of the wires and then we put it to the common and the normally open. Because this relay is constantly energized besides when there's a fault, um, the normally open becomes the quote normally closed terminal or the one that's going to be switched to all the time except when the fault occurs. So basically what this does is it completes the circuit to the um, resistor so that the panel can sense it except when the relay loses power due to a fault on the smoke detector power circuit. Now let's move on to the negative of the resettable power which goes down into the relay. This just jumpers out of the common and goes to our reset switch which is also the negative for our LEDs. It's very important that you put the constant negative that comes in onto this terminal in the middle instead of the one on the bottom because the circuit will only go through when the reset switch is turned so basically the LEDs would only turn on momentarily while you hold in the switch but then our negative comes out right here you can see it jumpers over twice in this diagram and then goes into the negative of the relay which has the constant positive as well so basically when you turn the switch the negative power will come in well I guess it's not power because it's the return but whatever it goes in here the relay will be energized and remove the um, common from the normally closed and move it to the normally open which has nothing on it so basically the smoke detector will turn off and in turn this relay will also turn off telling the panel that it has no power and giving it trouble the smoke detector resets when it has no power so that's how we reset the detector just using simple relay circuitry and then finally we have our zone power output this is hooked up <laughs> very simply our positive goes out here um, and our negative as well. It doesn't matter which of the two terminals you hook it up to because the four wire smoke detector just has a relay inside of it and relays don't have a polarity because they're just closing the circuit. Um, but then we jumper off of those with the two wires. One of the wires needs to be spliced into the relay so that the um, leg will be cut off to the resistor when it loses power. And then the two leads continue down here and go to our test switch on the relay this is completely separate from the LEDs. This is its own entity. It's like a pull station, like I said before. And then we have our end of the line resistor, and that just completes the zone circuit. There's basically nothing altered in the zone circuit. It's just in and out, besides the relay, of course. And that is how you hook up the RTS-151 key up to a smoke detector to use it, as well as the MS-2. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Or if you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, that's going to conclude this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. What's up, guys? Aaron Productions here, and today... Holy... I thought that was a strobe going off. Okay. <laughs> interesting way to start a video or if you guys have any questions please leave them down in the comments i'm happy to ask I'm <laughs>